couple of extra hours, could you? I've got a load of ironing. Max will pay you. No, sorry, I can't. I'm working in the loof after. Oh, right, yes. It's like this, um, happy hour, you know, for the over 55s. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Well, actually, I, I could pop back for an hour after if you want. Oh. You know, before the club opens, after this 55s do. <laughs> Sounds like a contradiction in terms, Denis. You are. Well, I don't see how it's possible to be happy and over 55. But looking at your face in the mirror it must be seriously depressing. All those wrinkles and saggy bits. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm getting wrinkles. <laughs> Rubbish! Oh, no, I am. Look, you know, when I smile. Oh, that's a laughter line. You don't get your first wrinkle for years yet. How old are you? 24. Today, actually. Today? Happy birthday! Thanks. Do you know you're the first person who said that? I think you're probably going to be the last. Well, perhaps no one else knows. My sister knows. Well, maybe... She's obviously forgotten. No presents. Not even a card. I know the feeling. Oh. <laughs> it isn't your birthday as well, is it? No. So? On the 24th, eh? One year off course over a century and look at me. Working all day. No post. Even my own mum's forgotten what day it is. Dear Mr Thornton, I am writing to let you know that for the next three weeks, Daniel Simpson, Year 9, will be attending a computer course at Ninefield Grammar School. Yours sincerely, O.J. Simpson. O.J.? Well, let me point out it was my name long before it was his. Did you write this? Yeah, on the computer. And did you forge your father's signature? Yeah. Well, not very skillful, as it happens. It doesn't look anything like my signature. You never questioned this? You, you never rang us to check? What about you? Did you forge a note? No. No wonder you got caught. You're not so smart, Danny. You got caught, too. Only because a policeman spotted me. So, what exactly did you two think you were playing at? We weren't playing at anything. We just wanted to get a decent education. Which implies you're not getting one here. I'm not. Daniel! No, no, let him speak. So tell me what you've been doing since half-term, Daniel. Well, I've read up on a load of stuff. Been to the Tate, the Walker Gallery. Leah. We went to the Maritime Museum. We found out all sorts about the slave trade. Yeah, that was good. And I've been through some old maths papers and physics. Well, that's fine. But, uh, it's a bit haphazard, isn't it? No direction, no structure. Well, it's not very directed or structured here, is it? No one cares. The kids mess around. Uh, the labs are pathetic. No books. Yes. All right, Dan. I think you've made your point. Well, it all sounds rather damning. Actually, Mr. Simpson, our exam results are well above average. And even if your son isn't satisfied by what we've got to offer... Look, I've been sat here for ten minutes now, and all we've done is talk about him. What about Leo? Is Danny more important than Leo because his parents speak the same way you do? I'm sorry. I don't mean to cause offence. But I couldn't care less about your son's education. I want to know what you're going to do to stop my lad here, Leo, getting into trouble. Look, can we just deal with one item at a time? Yeah, and I hope you can be much more effective than you were the last time I was in this office. There you go. One very late breakfast in bed. Oh, thanks. I get a kiss for that. Oh, careful. you spill the coffee. You eat up. Do you like the flowers? Yeah. They're lovely. I wanted to get you something. I get. Get what? I get scared. What of? That one day you won't be here when I get back from the night shift. But, Gary, I made you a promise. Yeah, no, but... Oh, I'm doing my best. I don't want you doing your best. I want it to be real. What are you talking about, real? It's never going to be real. I'll live with you, do what I have to do, but I can't... I don't love you, Gary. So don't expect romance. Why not? Because that's Mike Dixon's department, right? Face facts, Lens. He's not going to come galloping in on his white charger and whisk you away. No. I know. He's going to forget. I know he is. He's 
gonna find someone else. But you sent him away. You chose to stay here. Because I made a bargain with you. And I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, but that's not just about putting up curtains, is it? Or doing the flat out and making me dinner. I need more than that. You need more than that. I can't spend the next 30 years like this. It's time there was a bit of romance. An old Ted Prissy sat there in bed. I'd better get going. <laughs> Why? You know, Kylie's at your mum's. We've got nothing else on. I can't be laying here all day. I've got things to do. So this lad turns up from some grammar school with these mad ideas in his head. And the next thing, Leo's wandering the streets all day. We weren't wandering the streets. Just stand on a minute. Have you ever thought about teaching the boy some manners? Excuse me. You can't accuse Daniel of having no manners. Nobody ever said he was perfect, least of all me, but that's the one thing you cannot accuse him of. Look, this isn't getting us anywhere. Well, I was talking and he interrupted me. You just interrupted Mr Thornton. Can I finish what I was saying? I'm saying that's how it starts, isn't it? Sagging off school, getting bored. Then it's a bit of shoplifting here, a bit of joyriding there. Next thing you know, the mug and all ladies. Look, I want my son here, in school. And I don't want him being influenced by some boy whose parents have got no control Hang over him. Hang on. Before you jump to any more conclusions about us, can I just give you a few facts? Before we moved here, Daniel was at a very prestigious grammar school where he just happened to be doing rather well. And with every respect to Mr Thornton, Brookside Comp is simply not in the same league. No, but it should be. That's my point. We shouldn't have to scrape together enough money to give our son a better education. It should be his right. Well, there's a simple answer to that. If we had more pupils with Daniel's ability and motivation, then we could raise the standards overnight. But we haven't got them because the prestigious grammar schools have creamed them off. Look, this is my son's future we're talking about here. This isn't any TV discussion program. So what are you going to do about it? I mean, are you going to punish Danny? Do you even care? I find that an extremely offensive accusation. Of course we care. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't give a toss. But that doesn't matter, does it? He's always going to be all right. He'll get to the top no matter what. But it's not going to be that easy for my Leo. Look, look, Mr. Johnson, please. But that's what I'm saying. It should be that no, easy. We know Every... it should be, but it isn't. You know, we haven't all been born with silver spoons sticking out of our mouths, have we, O.J.? Now, look, I'll just be grateful if he passes enough exams to get some kind of job and stay out of trouble. Right. Well, if you'd like to wait outside for a moment, I think I ought to have a word with Daniel and Leo in private. A visitor. Coming in. So, um, have you moved in Pavement now, then, have you? More or less. Of course. You and the other Mrs. Farn have spitting image of each other. <laughs> <laughs> We're not remotely alike. Oh, no offence, love. Only that's fellas for you, isn't it, eh? They married the same woman over and over again. Only it's a younger version every time. Julia. Oh, hiya, love. I've just popped round to see if you come to this knees up this afternoon. You know this dude that Terry Sullivan's putting on? Oh, yes. What is it exactly? A tea dance? Well, that's what I'm hoping. We'll be able to polish up our military two step, eh? <laughs> I'll save the first waltz for you. Oh, right. Drinks are price, it says on the poster. Makes one long to be over 55. <laughs> Actually, Susanna, after 55, life gets progressively more entertaining. He's right, you know, love. And I tell you what, he's Fred Astaire on that dance floor. Oh, well, that's the children safely dropped off. God, the traffic. Oh, oh hi, you love. Right, I've finished in the bathroom, Mrs. Farn, and where next? Oh, hi, Max. Hi. Julia, let me see you to the door. Oh, let me see you to the door. <laughs> Do you know who he reminds me of? David Niven, only with shorter legs. <laughs> so, um, I'll be seeing you this afternoon, then, shall I? <laughs> David Niven. <laughs> right, uh, where next? Uh, well, I've just been explaining to Samantha that I'll be organising things from now on. Oh, uh, right. Mm, so you could just whiz the hoover around my room. Right. OK, See then. Mm. Excuse me. Cheerio. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Has she got a crush on you? What, Julia? <laughs> no. Samantha. Be careful, darling. Cradle snatching. She's all of 24. Today, actually. Poor little soul. No one even sent her a card. 
By the way, nothing in the post for me today, was there? No, why? Were you expecting something? No, not really. I thought it might be his birthday as well, but, um, apparently not. You couldn't get her a little something, could you? Sorry? A present for Samantha. I, I mean, I don't mean buy her anything. A bottle from the restaurant, that'll do. What made you ask if she had a crush on me? God, how humiliating. Being lectured on good parenting by Mick Johnson. So go on, then. What did he say? Got this book. It's got to be signed by the teacher at the beginning and the end of each lesson. Just in case a teleport off somewhere in the middle. Sounds fair enough to me. Come oh, beam me up, Scotty. I hate this place. I'm not staying on here, Dad. I hate it. Well, I'm sorry, but you'll have to. There's no alternative. Oh, yes, there is. He's right, Belle. There is. And he took it. Oh, come on. No, Lee, be fair. He made some very adult and sensible decisions. Oh, that was very adult and sensible, getting Leo Johnson involved. Well, no, not that. But the rest, though, pretty enterprising, I thought. But look, Dan, education isn't just about academic success and getting into Oxbridge. It's about learning to mix, about getting on with people. All right, I'll finish the term if that's what you want. But after that, I'm going back to my old school. Look, we can't afford it. You could afford it before. That was when I had a job before I was made redundant. What about redundancy pay? Well, how do you think we paid for the new house? Well, what happened to the money from the old house? Oh, Look, just leave it, Dan, all right? Why won't anybody ever give me a straight answer? Why doesn't Mum just get another job? It's not that easy. Why not? You're not trying, are you? <sighs> We've been busy with the move. I'm the only one who's making any effort in this family. Everyone else is just coasting along as usual. And I'm in a dump of a school. I've got to do a paper round to get any pocket money. Why won't anybody tell me what's going on? Things are not as simple as the... Well, I know it all looks a bit odd, but there are reasons why. Well, here's what happened. I... I the, the firm sent me on this management course, Look, that and was I... the bell. Go on, Dan. You should be in a lesson now. Go on. Yeah, but I want them to... For once in your life, Dan, you will you just do as you're told. Go. I thought you were going to tell me. Well, I know that we no, said that we No, Belle. But look at the poor kid, Ollie. He's so unhappy. He has a right to know why his world's collapsed around his ears. So I just finished in the bathroom when I heard his voice. You're telling me, Max Farnham came out. Especially because he knew you'd be there. Well, why else? Well, could it possibly be because he lives there? Oh, you can mock. Well, I'm sorry, love. I just can't see it. You and Max Farnham. Well, why not? Poor thing. He needs a bit of love and understanding. He doesn't get much of it at home. And why can't he see it? Well, how can I put this tactfully? You're not exactly his type, are you? Oh, well, he obviously thinks I am. You should have seen his eyes when I came downstairs this morning. He was undressing me every step of the way. In your dreams, girl. Right, girls, ready for the stampede? Thank God, we'll crack under the pressure. Come in, ladies, come on. Let's make your way to the bar there. Uh, Mo, can you save these ladies, please? Sammy, keys. You what? Are you on till late tonight? Yeah. Well, could you lock up for me then? Oh, right, OK. You can keep them. I've got a spare set, and it'd really help me out if you could take responsibility of locking up from now on. Oh, right, thanks. Ah, Bing, nice to see you. Hey, why don't you get yourself a drink? Right, yes, thank you. So always the boss's blue-eyed girl, then. Oh, it's just a way I have. Yeah, just a way of sticking your boobs out and fluttering your eyelashes. I do not. It's not right. I've been here longer than you. I'm senior to you. Yeah, but the thing is, Mel, all your management material. Oh, sorry, Mr Crosby. Hey, Max, God, you've aged a bit. Pardon? I wanted to put you a day over 50. I'm sorry. No, it's over 55s only. Oh, I see. Oh, very good. No, actually, I've come to see Sammy Daniels. Look, there she is behind the bar. Thanks. Hi, David. You, EJ! Ah, oh, Sammy. Uh, happy birthday. Sorry, we didn't realise. Oh, for me? Yeah. Many happy returns. Oh, look, Mo. Champagne. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Oh, thanks, Max. It... I don't know what to say. Anyway, I must dash. Uh, enjoy the rest of your birthday. I didn't know it was your birthday. See, I told you, I can have that man any time I want. Oh, I'm knackered. Just doing my 
bad nights. Bad timing. You come in. No. Alright, you know, I don't mean to sleep. Well, I. No. The thing about nights is, you know, I miss you. you know. I miss being in bed with you. Oh, my Gary. When then? Don't I'm busy. I want to get these finished. Sod those! I'm sick of them. I don't want bloody curtains. I want a wife. I want everything I'm entitled to expect from a wife. You know, a bit of warmth, a bit of love, a bit of comfort. I bought you flowers, for God's sake. I brought you breakfast. And what do I get, eh? Okay, then, who paid for the curtains, eh? Who paid for the food in your stomach and the roof over your head? Who's forked out for every flaming thing you've got? You owe me! I'll be in the bedroom. Joanna, it's the third time that woman's been back with double whiskies. Well, there's nothing else for them to do, is there? No dancing, no bingo. Hasn't even organised a tombola. It's sad when people of our age have to resort to drinking in the afternoons to keep themselves entertained. Care for another tequila sunrise, Joanna? Oh, thanks very much. I don't mind if I do. Ollie, if we made some big cuts, couldn't we just about scrape enough money to keep him at the grammar school? What, two grand a term? Well then, I'm sorry, it's not fair and we're going to have to tell him. Okay. If it'll make you feel any better. And it probably will for about five minutes. But what's he going to do to Danny? He's too young, Belle. He'll judge you. And they don't have much compassion, kids of his age. Everything's either black or white. So we stick to the story, even though he doesn't believe a word of it? It doesn't matter. But it's not fair, Ollie, not on him and not on me, and seeing him so miserable, knowing it's my fault. And will it ease your conscience if he knows why his career at the grammar's over? Well, it would ease my conscience knowing I could do something about it. For God's sake, Ollie, we're meant to be educated, intelligent people. I mean, maybe Mick Johnson across the road can't do much to change things for Leo, but if we can't make things right for Dan, I mean, look at us. We've got all the advantages. Except money. All right, then. I'll get money. Oh, yeah? Post office hold-up, bank robbery? That's not funny. Don't make a joke of it. This is Dan's life. I'll get a job. That easy, huh? Well, any job will do. Dan's right. Why haven't I even tried? Because I'm too ashamed to show my face out there where everybody knows about me. That's why. Look, Belle. And don't interrupt. Danny is going back to the old school next term if I've got to scrub floors to get him there. Oh, did you remember? Mm, yes, yeah, I gave her a bottle of champagne. Oh, nothing too good, I hope. Bottom of the range. Mm, not that I begrudge Samantha the decent stuff. I just think it'd be wasted on her. Oh, I'm disturbing you, aren't I? I really could do with a little office of my own. Yeah. Mm? Except there's not much point if I'm only doing the accounts. Unless, of course, you were thinking of giving me more responsibility. Well, I, I tell you what, uh, we'll see what happens, eh? Well, for example, you could make me a partner. <laughs> I can't offer you a partnership, Susanna. Not unless you've got a few thousand to invest. <laughs> but, you see, the thing is, darling, doing your accounts isn't terribly satisfying. So, um, if this is all you're offering, I don't think there's much point in sticking around. Hmm? You could do the VAT yourself. No, I think it's either a lot more responsibility or, um, I'll start looking for something else. Well, we'll... I'll think about it. Will you? Oh, thanks, darling. I think you should. Gary, don't you hear me? <laughs> oh, where can I touch you then, anyway? 
I'm sorry. 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 If I wanted a piece of wood, I'd have married a flaming tree. Just get on with it, Gary. Right? You promised. I know. I know. It's about time you started delivering. I kept my side of the bargain. I can't. I'm sorry, Gary, I can't. I will. I promise I will, but I can't. No. Don't walk out on me. I've got to see to Gary. Shut up. Shut Don't you hear me? Just shut Shut you come a waltzing Matilda with me. And we sang and we danced and we waited for his billy bomb. You come a waltzing Matilda with me. Jean would have loved this in her ugly proletarian taste, Jean. <laughs> Strangely enough, Julia, today is our wedding anniversary. Ah. Mm. 42 years ago today, we tied the knot. You know, she hasn't even sent me a card. Which I take as proof positive, if proof were needed, that our marriage is well and truly over. No, I'm afraid she prefers to milk goats and paint pictures in a colony of perverts and sophists. Ah. Never mind, Lord. As my mum used to say, as one door closes, another shuts. A cup of tea? No. I do. I'm parched. the sea. Deserted beaches. We'd have the whole place to ourselves. Well, apart from the local vicar. Vicar? Yeah, listen, we sail out on a boat and he marries us under a palm umbrella. And then we watch the sun sink slowly over the Caribbean. Can I pick a honeymoon or can I pick a honeymoon? Well, yeah, it looks great, but... Oh, I knew you'd love it. Listen, why don't I give him a call now? Nat, slow down. What's the panic for? <laughs> Look, how do you feel about bringing the wedding forward? Nat. Look, I, I don't think I can wait another two months. It feels like two years away. I just want us to be married as soon as possible. We've been through this before, and we both agreed it wouldn't be fair on our families. Me mum would be in bits if she didn't see me wed in a church. Yeah, I know, but I just want us to be together, properly, as soon as we can. I want to be out of here as well. We're all living on top of each other. Please. I couldn't do it to me, Mum and Dad. You know what a church wedding means to them. I'm sorry, babe, but we're getting married in August with all my family there and all yours. Bye. Right, I'm off. Wish me luck. Luck, Mum. See you.
Aye, aye. What's going on here? Off somewhere special, are we? Uh, no, not really. Well, you're certainly done up to the nines. Must be a hot day, say. Never mind, I won't say anything. Mum's a word. <laughs> if you'd excuse me. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> See you soon, eh? <laughs> Bye. Snoopsy draws. I hope you haven't come back here to cause more trouble, ma... What the hell happened to you? Have you seen me, Mum? No, I don't know. God almighty! Who did that to you? I'm sorry, she isn't in and I haven't got any money. Lindsay, have you been mugged? Can I owe you? Here, here, I've got it here. Got it here. How much is it? Four pounds something. Here, yeah, miss. Mm -hmm. Well, have they, have, they, have they taken your purse? Lindsay, where did it happen? Have you told the police? Lindsay, listen to me. Did you get a good look at them? Oh, this will be mum. Oh, she's not in it, she love. Hey, hey, come on, it's all right. Uh, come on. It's okay, love. I'm not gonna hurt you, am I? It's all right. Come on. Let's get you inside, eh? Lindsay? Oh, 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 I don't know, Jack, she got out of the cab just now. No money, nothing. Whoever did that to us took a purse and all. And in broad daylight. Come on, love. Come on, let's get you out. Jack, is there anything I can do? No, thanks, Ron. Well, is there anybody you want me to ring? No, it's all right, Ron. I'll take care of yourself. Are you sure? Come on, you're right. It's all right, you home now. Come on. Let's get you sat down, eh? Just get some more, Salins, all right? It's all right, love. Just seeing how bad it is, that's all. Come on. What happened, love? Oh. Who did this to you? Let's. Was him, wasn't it? I'm right, aren't I? Has he hit you before? Are you sure? First time. But why? Right. Just clean you up and then I'm going out there. No. Lindsay, you can't get away with this. Look at the stays off you, love. It's a wonder he didn't kill you. Mum, will you just leave it? No, love, I can't. Not after what he's done to you. Please. It's a good job your dad's not here because he'd kill him. Mum, please. This isn't just down to Gary. My fault is this. Lindsay, no one deserves this. I should have tried harder. Been more like a proper wife. And being a proper wife means taking a beating from him, does it? Lindsay, will you look at me? Does it? I could have tried to be harder instead of freezing him out. And why did you freeze him out? Because you don't love him, that's why. And you knew that when you went back to him, didn't you? See, you can't expect to act like you want to be even in the same room as him. Never mind, pretend that you love him. And just because you couldn't pretend, Lindsay, doesn't give that lad the right to it, you ever. Do you understand me? Right. Now we'll just finish cleaning you up. And then we'll sort out what we're going to do about him. <laughs> Not drinking the profits, I hope. Oh, hardly. Here, try that. What do you think? Mmm, not bad. What is it? It's a Bulgarian table wine. We've got it on promotion. <laughs> anyway, so, <clears throat> where are all the bags? Sorry? I thought you said you'd been into town. 
Max, I can't go into town without buying clothes, you know. Oh, right. Oh, well, it's the first time for everything, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and red wine is very difficult to wash out. <laughs> <laughs> Come and sit down. I want to talk to you about something. Susanna, we've got customers. That's what I want to talk to you about. About the customers? Well, no, it's about the restaurant, actually. You know you were talking about what a good team we made the other day? Yes. And we agreed that I could help if I took more responsibility. Yeah. Well, I've come up with a perfect plan. Uh, it's funny, but I, I, suddenly I can hear these alarm bells ringing. <laughs> Just hear me out, Max. Would you agree that when it comes to keeping up with the paperwork on this place, you're not exactly on top of things? Well, I must admit, I have let things slip. And would you also agree that if I wasn't here, you'd probably let things slip again? Well, I... Uh... Well, doesn't it make sense to involve me in the financial side of the restaurant? How much more involved are we talking? Enough to make me a signatory in grants. I've had a solicitor draw up a proper contract of employment. It's all here in black and white. All right. Where is he? Where's who? Jeremy Beadle. I mean, this is a wind-up, isn't it? Surely you can't be serious. You are serious. I've never been more serious about anything in my life. Susanna, this is absolutely insane. You were the one who said I should have more responsibility. But that much. Max, this is a business proposition. Nothing to do with our personal relationship. I could save you a lot of money, and I mean a lot. Think about it. Thanks, Mum. God, I haven't even thought about Kylie. She's still at nursery. Yeah, it's okay. I've, uh, I've asked your auntie Val if she'll pick her up later on. Ben's, can I ask you something? What? What would you have done if you hadn't come round here? To my help? Would you have told anyone that Gary at you? I don't know. Well, probably not now. It's not the sort of thing you want the whole world knowing, is it? So you'd have just carried on then, would you? Open it never happen again. It wouldn't. Not if I try harder to make it work. Linz, don't kid yourself that he wouldn't do it again, love, because you would. Do you remember Mandy Jordash? The one that lived here? She used to tell herself that. And the more her husband beat her, the more she covered it up. Do you know what she said to me once? She said the worst thing wasn't the beatings. It was knowing that other people knew. And didn't say anything. So they became part of the lie. And that's how men like Trevor Jordash get away with it, Linz, which is why we can't let Gary get away with what he's done to you, love. We've got to do something about this. Mum, will you just leave it? It'll be all right. Look, no, Lindsay, it won't be all right. What he did to you was wrong, and you know it. Linz, love, I'm going to have to go round there. Mum, please. No, love, I'm sorry, I've got to. Mum, I don't want you to. Lindsay, if you've been listening to one word I've just said, you'll know why I've got to do this. Don't. Sorry, love, I've got to. Mum, you don't understand. What do you mean, love? Linz, tell me. Why won't you tell me? You haven't told me everything, have you? I'd recognize that face anywhere. All right, Val. What have you brought for me? Jam roly poly. I can do better than that. I just fancy going out for a meal tonight. What, uh, just me and you? Well, do you want a chaperone? 
Yeah, no, no, all right. Yeah, yeah, you're done. Good. I don't usually make a habit of asking men out. But if I waited for you to ask me, we'd be drawing our pensions. Uh, yeah, well, let's see, the thing is, I'm a little bit out of practice, that's all, you know. So. Would you fancy going? Well, what's that grand slang? Very classy, yeah. Don't get no doggy bags in there, you know. OK. You book the table, and I'll pick you up at eight. All right, nice one, yeah. OK. See you later. Chills out. Hey, hey, I'll be putting Mick to shame soon. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Val. Hey, guy, little boy. Hey. Guess who's been asked out on a date? Oh, so you finally asked Val out, did you? No. She asked me. You didn't think you're in yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what am I going to wear? Well, clothes are usually a good idea, you know what I mean? No, I mean, my me blue suit or my black suit. What looks oh, best? blue. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, Lindsay, you'll have to shave my time for an hour. This isn't exactly work wonders for me, is it? Yeah, well, you like a bit of the ass splashing all along, don't you? I wouldn't know, son. You're the expert. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, my God, I don't believe it. She's here at last. Come on, you. Hey, you, babe. Oh, how are you doing? Eh, uh, don't mind us, like. Oh, God, where's my manners? This is Faye. She's going to be running the beauty parlour. Faye, this is Sinbad. That's his shop. Hi, Hi Sinbad. Hello, Faye. Ooh, you've got a firm grip, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and this is Mickey. He runs the beer pizza parlour. Pleased to meet you, Faye. Pepperoni sausage. You what? That's my favourite pizza topping. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, Madam Fee, big time for a grand tour. See you, lads. See ya. Hope to see you again, boys. Yeah, see you, Fee. <laughs> I tell you what, you might be in there if you've got plenty of sausage. <laughs> yeah, you've seen. You probably stand a better chance with it than I do. Well, uh, you might have got it all you haven't. Uh... <laughs> I totally said once upon a time, and she was out like a light. Thanks for seeing to him, Mum. I don't think I'm in any fit state right now. believe it, you know. Lindsay, we've got to go to the police about this. I've told you, I just want to forget about it. Love, he raped you. I'm his wife. What are the police going to do? Oh, and being his wife gives him the right to rape you, does it? Mum, I'm married to him. And that means sleeping with him. I haven't slept with him in ages. It doesn't matter if you haven't slept with him in ages. It doesn't give him the right to rape you, does it? Lindsay, love. Not living by laws made in the Middle Ages anymore, you know? What he did to you is illegal, whether you're his wife or not. You should be put away. You mean take him to court? I don't know if I could face that. But be in all the papers, everyone would find out. I'd feel ashamed. Lindsay, love. You've got to stop blaming yourself about all this. That's exactly what Gary wants. Lindsay, please. One in the wrong, you know. He is. I'm sorry, love. I can't just sit here and do nothing. Mum, don't. I've got to, love. I'm sorry. Mum, don't. Sorry, love. I've got to. God, Lens, it's Gary. Oh, my God, Mum. Don't let him know me. Yeah? It's all right, love. I'll handle him. Is Lindsay there? Oh, uh, no, you've, uh, you've missed her. She's just nipped out. Uh, okay. Is it all right if I come in and wait? Yeah. Go through. Is she okay? How do you mean? Uh, I just wondered after, um, well, she had a bit of a fall earlier. I wasn't there, like, but, uh, must have been pretty bad. Oh, yeah, it must have been. I've been dead worried about her. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Tell you what, while we wait for her, you and me can have a little chat, can't we? Uh, yeah, yeah. Listen, I said you used some of me after shave, not the whole flaming bottle. Ah, you don't need jealous. God blame me, Mick, you're gonna end up like Pavarotti the way you're going on. Hey, carbohydrates, mate. All parts of the fitness regime. All right, well, give me a decent nosh up at Grant's any day of the week, mate. 
Well, Val will be in any minute. What do you think? Do you think she'll be impressed? Yeah, they have to see if there's a knock on us. Was it that bad? Hello, massage parlor. Oh, all right, Val. <laughs> no, no, I was just, uh, you just, yeah. You all right? Oh, all right. Oh, well. Oh, well, never mind then. No, no, it's, it's not your fault. It's, uh, can't be helped, can it? Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it. No, that's okay. All right. But thanks for ringing anyway. See ya. What's up, you being jibbed? I told you I'd have to shave it to over Parliament, didn't I? Oh, look, I'm sorry, mate. But why can't you come out? The old one next door to has had a fall, so she's going to take it to the Aussie. Mm. I don't know. Do you think she's just fobbing me off and just looking for an excuse? No, it's not her fault, is it? Anyway, never mind. Look, there's enough here for two, eh? Mm. Thanks very much. Oh, I see. If I get him in trunk, it'll make me sign this to you. <laughs> Max, I'm not that obvious. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure about this. Max, why would I let you down? I'd have a vested interest in the success of the business. And company credit cards. Oh, so you don't trust me. Well, there's a leading question. If I had to be honest, no. At least I didn't. Until recently, since you've been living here and working at the restaurant, I've got to know you again. So, you do trust me now? Yes, I think I do. But not enough to give me more responsibility in the restaurant. Max, I want this to work as much as you. All right. I agree in principle. Everything you said makes sense, but... I don't know, Susanna. I mean, what if we fall out with each other again? But we get on better now than we've ever done, don't we? Yeah, but... Things are different to how they were before. We've both changed for the better. Max, if you sign this, I'll make sure it's the best thing you've ever done. I promise. I think this calls for a little celebration. You're that confident I'd sign, eh? <laughs> Let's just say I knew you'd see sense. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to us. To us. Hmm. What was that for? For having faith in me. Oh, dear. What if David comes back? David won't be back for ages. Children are asleep. I am. Um, I don't know if this is right. Then stop. Night, Mum. Night, night, darling. Sleep well. Thank you. What's up? What's this place? You can hear everything. When we'll have to be quiet, then, won't we? Pretend you're on your Caribbean island. Oh, you haven't still got a cop on, have you? Because I wouldn't run away with you and get married. No. Well, what is it, then? I'm going to be up early tomorrow. I'm really tired. I'm sorry.
thought you said Lindsay would be back soon. She's been gone ages. Missing her, are you? Here's your coffee. Oh! Oh! What the hell did you do that for? Oh, did that hurt? Did it? So I am sorry. Still, it's only a bit of a skull, is miss. I mean, it's not like it's a split lip, is it, Gary? It's not like someone's beating you to a pulp, is it, Gary? She's hey. here, isn't she? Where is Don't she? Don't you go anywhere near her, you, you bastard. Lindsay! You raped her, didn't you? You what? Don't you bloody uh. pretend to be. You don't know what you've done, lad. I'll get the police on you. You're off your head. I'm her husband. I never touched her. Oh, yeah? Well, you can tell the police that, can't you? It's only her word against mine. You piece of <laughs> filth! You just get out of my house! Go on, get out! I'm not leaving without Lindsay. Where is she? Do you think she'd go back with you after what you've done to her, eh? Lindsay! Don't you go near her again! Ow! Get your dirty hands off me! You're not treating me like you did all Lindsay! Don't you touch her! Lindsay, Liz. come back with me. I'm not leaving without you. You stay here, love. I'm her husband. She belongs with me. Come on, Lindsay. Come Get on. Get off me, Gary. Come back with me where you belong. Get out of here. She's not going anywhere. She's coming back with me, I'm telling you. We had a deal. You made a promise. You said she'd stick to it. Gary, will you just go? Say she doesn't want you there because you're sick. She's turning you against me. Oh, God, don't that yourself, lad. Now, get out. I said get out. I'm telling you, I want you back in that flat. You hear me? You're coming back. You get out and don't go back. Max. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Hello? Hello? Oh, sorry, it's a bad line. Hello? Uh, I'll just get Max for you. Oh. It's Patricia. Mm -hmm. Max, it's Patricia on the phone. Hello? Oh. Uh, Patricia. Uh, yes, uh, Susanna's just popped round with Matthew and Emily. Uh, they're not well. No, no, she's got to go out for the day. Uh, me? No, no, I was in the bathroom. Look, Patricia, can I ring you back? It's a very bad line. No, no, no. I'll ring you back late. Oh, God, she's hung up. She uh, didn't suspect anything, did she? God knows. Oh, tell me that was just a battery. Go on, Max. Shake it. David. Uh... Morning. Whoop. Sleepy Joe. Everyone's gone out. We've got the place to ourselves. So. Jules. What's up? Don't. I'm tired. Are you sure it's not me you're tired of? No, of course not. What's up then? Nothing's up. Oh, no, that's the problem. Look. Just because I don't feel like sex, it doesn't mean I've gone off you. 
Why don't you want it? I told you I'm tired. I just want to go to sleep. Sorry, I woke you. Hiya. Hiya, love. Hiya. Come give me a kiss. <laughs> Put the kettle on, love. Do you want a cup of tea? No, you don't, right, Isa. I'm going back to the flat. Yeah, well, all right. We'll have a cup of tea and then I'll come and help you pack your stuff. Mum, I'm going back to him. I've got to. I know. Do you want to play in the garden, eh? Mm. Make your nana daisy chain, eh? There's a good girl. Tell me you don't mean it, then. Please. And what else can I do? He's only going to come back here for me. He's not going to let me go. You know what he's like. So you're just going to go back to him and uh, pretend it never happened? I'm going to try, whatever he does this again. You won't. Not if I... You know. What? Let him sleep with you? God, Lynch, you can hardly bring yourself to say the words, love. Never mind actually go through with this. I'll have to. You don't have to do anything. Even if you don't try to stop him. It will still feel like he's raped you every time. Is that how you want to feel? Is this? No, but I... You're just fooling yourself, Linz. If you think you can pretend it never happened, because it's always going to be there, love. Every time he looks at you, every time he touches you, every time he tries to lay next to you, it's going to be there. It's never going to go away, you know. Can't you see that? <laughs> uh, what about Kylie? Do you really want her to go back and live with him? Because I don't know about you, Linz, but the thought of her going back to that... To that pervert it makes my skin crawl. What kind of a life are you going to have if you go back to him, eh? Because I wouldn't call this a life, you know. I'd call this a life sentence. Please, Liz. Please, love. Don't do this to yourself. Sorry, Mum. Lindsay, love. Kyle's, please don't, Liz. Kyle's. Lindsay, love, please. How do you fancy stopping on at your nan's, love? You're staying? You're right. I don't want to go back to Gary. Oh, I was just going to call you. Scrambled eggs and a smoked salmon. Just how you like them, <coughs> partner. Oh, God, that's something else David will start making sarcastic comments about. Listen, I think we should keep our business arrangements to ourselves, just for now. Oh, should it concern him? Yes. Uh, it was David gave him the money for grants. Where is he, anyway? Gone to the shops in a sulk. <laughs> right. Well, I think I'll sneak off to work. I don't think I can face him now. Oh, what about breakfast? No, I'm sorry, Susanna. I don't have time. Aspirins. Have you got any aspirins? My head is killing me. I think you better take the lot. I'm going up for a shower. David, um, I know you're annoyed, uh, but if you'll just let me explain. You don't need to explain anything to me, Max. I know what you're thinking, but... Please don't insult my intelligence by telling me it wasn't what it seemed. How could you do that behind Patricia's back? I, I didn't. It just... You are still married to Ian. Or did that conveniently slip your mind when you invited Susanna into your bed? David, it wasn't like that. But it never is with you, Max, is it? For God's sake, Pat has only been gone five minutes and you've already got Susanna taking her place. What is it with you? Do you get some kind of kick running willy-nilly between different women? David, please! Look. All right, I admit what I did was wrong. How magnanimous of you. All right, I had a little bit too much to drink. One thing led to another and you know the rest. And I promise that it won't happen again. Look, I don't want a relationship with Susanna. I'm not ready. I still haven't got over Patricia leaving me. But sleeping with another woman is your way of coping with it, is it? I have told you it was a one-off. And it shouldn't have happened the way that it did. And I'm sorry that you found out the way that you did. And I presume you told Susanna it was just a one-off. Well, I'm just picking my moment. Well, I can't just bled out that it was a mistake, can I? I don't know how you live with yourself, really, I don't. Look, David, I said I'm sorry, and I mean it. And if you don't like it, you know what you can do. Oh, move out, you mean? Oh, yes, that would suit you down to the ground, wouldn't it? You can do what you like, then. Cheat on my daughter as often as you like. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Max. 
but I intend to stay put. I shall protect my daughter's interests and the children's. It's all right, love. It's only Simbath. Hi, Sin. Hi, Jack. Um, can I come in a minute? Yes, love, yes. Come in. Um, do you want a cup of tea? Eh, uh, no, no thanks. I won't be stopping it. Is something wrong, love? Well, no, no. Well, what I mean, no, I mean... You mean yes? What's up? Well, you probably think it's daft, but it's... Well, you know... Sinbad, could you just give us a clue what you're on about? Jack, it's about your vow. What about it? Um, I think she's got off me. Oh, love, why would she do that? She was that keen on you the other day. Yeah, I know, it's just it's... Well, we were supposed to go out for a meal and she phoned up and I... I thought she was just trying to politely give me the Ali Vo, you know. Well, look, I tell you what, I'll have a word. But I'm sure you're worrying about nothing. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, well cheers, Jack. I hope you don't think I'm soft coming no, down. No, of course I don't think you're soft. Don't be stupid. Mm. What do you want? Eh, uh, uh, thanks for that, Jack. Oh, that's yes, all right, right, love, see you. Well, Ron sent me round for that fire, but he paid for Lindsay's taxi the other day. Gets you to do all his dirty work for him, does he? Wait there. That you could come in. Here. Sorry. <laughs> Lindsay looks like Jackie Onassis in those glasses, doesn't she? She didn't have much luck with husbands either, did she? No, she didn't. Here's your money. That's what you come for, isn't it? Looks like she made a mistake going back with Gary. I mean, she was asking for trouble, wasn't she? What's that supposed to mean? Well, it's obvious he's the type to knock women about. You can see it a mile off. She's only got herself to blame. Listen, you. The only reason she went back to her husband was because she thought it would be easier for Mike if she kept out of his life. The only person to blame in all this is Gary. She never has to be beaten up and raped, did she? You what? He raped her? Yes. And no woman asks to be raped, does she? So God help you if you ever suggest that our Lindsay deserved it. I won't. And I know you're going to find it very hard to keep something to yourself, Bev. But I'd appreciate it if this didn't go any further. She's upset enough as it is. I won't. I won't say a word. You see that you don't. You OK, Mum? Yes, love. Yeah, I'm OK. You OK? Not really, no. I'm, I'm just on pins all the time, thinking Gaddy might turn up at any minute. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to take Kylie out and go to Crocs to Thorla somewhere. You shouldn't follow us there. Will you be all right? Yeah. Except to be leaving you here by yourself, say so he turns up again. Don't you worry, love. I'll take care of Gary. Right, son. See you later, Mum. Ron! Guess what? What? What's up? It's that Gary. He didn't just attack Lindsay. He raped her and all. Shut up, my God. He what? Well done, Mouth Almighty. Oh. Gaddy raped her. Gaddy told me. Are you sure? Ron, she told me. But he couldn't have raped her, could he? He's her husband, for God's sake. Oh, he can still rape her. I mean, you should see the state of her. She's black and blue all over. She can hardly walk. She's here. Right. Michael, leave it. Michael! Hey, where are you going? Where the hell do you think I'm going? Stop our Michael doing something stupid. Where's Lindsay? I want to see her. Come on, Bev. Keep a big mouth shut about anything, just eh? Just let me see her. Will you calm down, son? You've just missed her, love. She's just gone out. Is it true? You've raped her? Yes. Right, that's it. He's dead. Michael! I'm gonna kill him! Oh, yeah, and end up in prison again! What good's that gonna do you? Mike, Look, he's not worth it! So you're just gonna stand here and let him get away with it? No chance. Michael, I said leave it, son! Have you told the police? No, Lindsay doesn't want that, Ron. Somebody has got to do something. Look, if anyone's going to do anything, Mike, it's going to be me, a mum. All right, so what I'll you source got to do? this. I said I'll source this. <sighs> now, will you just get out? The pair of you, please. Go on. Come on, son. Michael, come on. Come, come on, on, on Michael. <sighs> Mm. 
<clears throat> Hello? Um, can I speak to your boss? It's, uh, it's Jackie Cole killed Jimmy's wife. No, it's got nothing to do with Jimmy. Look, um, can you come to my house? You know where it is. As soon as you can. Oh, don't worry. I think it'd be worth a lot to both of us, believe me. Georgia. Oh, hello, you. What are you doing here? Oh, I hope you don't mind. I mean, if you're dead busy. Oh, no. It's OK. What's up? Have you got a minute? I just wanted to chat. Oh, right. Come on, then. I'll get your coffee. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing, really. Has Matt said anything to you? What about? Well, like, what he thinks about me. Like, whether he's gone off me. Nat? No. Why would he go off you? I don't know. He's just gone dead weird on me. Weird? What, like, trying on your underwear or something? No, nothing like that. He's just gone off it. You know, sex. Since when? Well, only the last couple of days, really. Oh, it's not like him. I'm just worried that he's gone off me and he's too scared to tell me. Well, have you asked him? Oh, yeah. He says he still loves me and everything, but... Oh, I just think he's hiding something. Oh, God, I can't even believe I'm talking about this. Hey, come on. Look, I'm glad you feel you can talk to me. You know how Nat's been about these exams. It's probably that. His mind's been somewhere else. Do you reckon? Trust me. Mrs. Corkill, a pleasure to meet you again. You'd better come in. Are we in safe hands? Well, I do think she's rather good. You'll be getting her life history as well as a oh. facial. <laughs> she's related to the chap who has the hairdresser's his sister, I think. Oh, yeah. So you're treating yourself to a little pampering as well? Mm. Well, I rather think I deserve it. I think I've got myself a job with a little help from a friend. Congratulations! Doing what? In the fabric department at Millard's. It's not definite yet, but she's put in a good word for me, so I thought I'd go ahead, even if it is a little bit premature. Oh, I'm sure you'll get it. Actually, I'm doing some celebrating. Oh? Max has given me a bit of a promotion. I've joined the management team. Oh, that <laughs> sounds really high-powered. Max must be very impressed. What about you and he? Are you on an even keel? Actually, we're partners in more than just business. <laughs> You're not? <laughs> <laughs> just swept me off my feet. A swine. <laughs> and this time, I think it's for good. Do you like the wallpaper? Yes, very, um, colourful. Covers them bullet holes quite nicely, doesn't it? Do you like cats? I'm afraid I'm not a lover of musicals. I mean, cats, as in animals. I had a cat once. Lovely little thing she was. Polly. Only she's dead now. Mrs. Corkhill, much as I'd like to discuss animal welfare with you, I'm a busy man. I do hope you haven't asked me round just to tell me about Polly's demise. No. 
I just want you to know what it took for me to pick up that phone and call you after what you've done. I've asked you because my daughter was raped. Well, you're not suggesting I'm responsible for that as well. No, I'm, I know who's responsible. And you know him as well. Gary Stanlow. Your husband's partner, as I recall. Ex-partner. And my Jimmy's finished with drugs for good. Of course. My daughter's life has been ruined by Gary. Destroyed. And I just want to make sure that he keeps well away from it. Well, what exactly is it you want from me, Mrs. Corkhill? Well, I've got some information that I think might affect you. Oh, yes? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, Gary spoke to the police. The drug squad. He told them everything he knows, who he deals with here, and in Rotterdam. All his contacts, the lot. Well, I mean, I don't know whether the police have been round to see you yet, but just thought you might want to know who told them. I can assure you, Mrs. Corkhill, I have nothing to be concerned about on that score. My business is strictly above board. But I thought... However, I am surprised at Mr. Stanlow. I knew he wasn't very bright, but I didn't think he was that stupid. Unfortunately for him, the police did get hold of my brother in Rotterdam. Your brother? Yes. Now, I think it's time I ask you a few questions, Mrs. Corkhill. Like, where does Gary Stanlow live? Mm, well, what do you think? What? Max, I've just spent hours in a beauty salon. You might at least pretend to notice. Oh, uh, <laughs> right. Yes, of course. Um, well, very nice. <laughs> now... Uh, Susanna, please, David might walk in. Well, stop worrying about David. It's your house, not his. You should be able to do what you like. Yes, I know, but I, I think it would... Right, that's done. Patricia asked me to prune the roses. She was worried they might be neglected. Do excuse me. Is that what we're going to have to put up with from now on? What if we want a quiet night here? Sorry, please. Well, he wants to stay in the house. He's going to have to get used to us two being back together again. Yeah, well, actually, that's what I wanted to talk about, um, us. You see, the thing is, Susanna, what happened last night, it was... Well, it was wonderful, but... <sighs> I'm not doing this very well, am I? Um, what I'm really trying to say is... It's all happening a bit too fast for me. It's not that I don't want you. Of course I do. But I don't think I'm ready for a relationship yet. Oh. Oh, oh I see. Now, you notice I said the word yet. Because uh, I feel... I'm sure I'll feel ready in time. And if I was going to have a relationship with anyone, it would be with you. It's all been a terrible mistake. Is that it? No. Absolutely not. I do care for you, Susanna. I, really, I, I do. But let's just take things a little slower, eh? I've just got used to being on my own again. I can wait. Bet you a fiver dad Oi. doesn't notice you've been top to toad. Make it a tenner, I might consider it. Do you know uh, chocolate's supposed to be an aphrodisiac? Thank you for sharing that with us. Pity you don't like it very much, eh, Nat? Could do wonders for your love life. She gets worse. I do hope that's the correct address you've given me, Mrs. Corkhill. I wouldn't take kindly to being sent on a wild goose chase. No. Yeah. That's the right one. Splendid. Well, thank you for imparting that information to me. I'll pass it on to somebody who may be able to make use of it. Um, what are you going to do with him? Oh, not to worry, Mrs. Corkhill. I'll make sure somebody will be able to take care of things. Oh, by the way, what colour flowers do you suppose Mr. Stanlow likes? 
Red or white? Flowers? Well, I wouldn't know why. Oh, not to worry. Perhaps a simple wreath would be enough. You see, I'm not totally heartless, Mrs. Corkill. Wild poodles in North London and human-hungry vampire bats in Mexico. The new series of Absolutely Animal starts in just a few minutes here on Channel 4. Um, I spoke to our Jackie before. She said you'd been round to see her. All oh, right. Well, the thing is, um... Look, Val, it's all right, you know. I mean, if you two know we just remain friends, then that's fine by me. Sinbad. Look, I know I'm no Tom Cruise or anything. Oh, Jackie, tell me what you said. That you thought I'd gone off you. And I'm really sorry I didn't make it for the meal. I felt terrible about it. To be honest with you, when I didn't hear from you after that, I thought you'd gone off me. Did you? We're the right pair us, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, does that mean that you'd still want to go out with me? Well, that's why I'm here. I want to make it up to you. Well, I owe you a meal, so why not come round to ours at dinner time? Okay. Great. Right, well, I'd better work up an appetite down the gym then, hadn't I? Yeah, right. Well, see you then, Val. Okay. See you later. Oh, hi, Max. Sammy, I didn't know you were due to clean today. Oh, no, uh, I just thought I'd pop around, see if you needed any shopping doing. Oh, right. Um, no, I don't think so, but thanks for the offer. Well, don't forget. Just give us a call if you need anything. Right, yeah, will do. Suit you? That shade? I think so. Yeah, but you always look smart, don't you? Well, I'm not exactly Jean-Paul Gaultier. Yeah, but I'm sure you look better than he does in a kilt. <laughs> well, if you've got it, flaunt it, I say. Um, anyway, uh, I'll let you get on. I'll see you, Max. Yeah, bye, Sammy. <laughs> So are you in Simba tonight or no? Well, don't want to build me hopes up, but it's looking that way. He's invited me round for dinner. So, uh, no sign of a new romance for you then, Mick? Oh, you're joking, aren't you? The only thing I can pull these days is a muscle. Oh, my shoulder's killing me, do I'm not surprised the strain you put it under. I told you to take it easy. You've got to look after yourself with that injury. Don't overdo it. And anyway, you've got plenty of time to train. That's just it, I haven't. The novice competition's coming up in five weeks. I'll never be able to enter if I carry on like this. <sighs> I'll tell you what, I look like Mr. Puniverse compared to them guys. Oh, go away. Your body's in good shape. Not that good a shape, though. They must have been coming here years to get like that. Oh, that's Robbie and his mate. They've only been working out a couple of months. A couple of months? They must have been giving it some to get that fit. Yeah, well, it's not always down to the exercise that makes you look like that, is it? What do you mean? Steroids. Robbie started taking them when he had an injury so we could carry on training. The thing is, he carried on taking them even when the injury cleared up. And is he all right, Lee? It doesn't look like it's done any harm, does it? 
two of them have won three competitions between them already. And where did they get them from? Well, I've seen uh, Jerry, the owner, give them to them. Mm. How much do they pay for them? 40, 50 quid, I think. Some people pay for hundreds though. Have you ever taken them? No. I don't fancy some of the side effects you can get. What like? Acne, for a start. I think Simba would go off me and my face suddenly erupted like the servers of Mars. Those guys haven't got zits, have they? No, but you don't always get side effects. And as I say, some people do take them for genuine medical reasons. You know, injuries and that. Is that right? Yeah. Well, that's me. I'm off. I don't want to be late for some bad. You going for a shower? No, I'll try and do a bit more, you know. Well, take it easy. Otherwise, you're going to do yourself even more damage. See you later. See ya. Knocking. Thought you'd fancy a coffee. Yeah, well, I just had one, thanks. Well, it's here if you want it. Pat, if you ever need to talk to me about anything, I'm always here, you know that. Trouble shared and all that? I haven't got any troubles. It's not what I've heard. What's that supposed to mean? I, uh, <clears throat> had a little tete-a-tete -tete with my new pal, Jules, yesterday. She came into work to see me. Why? She was worried. Thought you'd gone off her. You know. Because you don't want to have sex with her anymore. We never used to have problems like that, did we, Nat? What's Jill's been telling you? Everything. She needed someone to confide in. She had no right talking to you about stuff like that. Oh, come on, Nat. She was really worried about it. Anyway, what was the problem? Mind on other things? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Winding me up. Well, I've told you before, it won't work. I love Jules, and the sooner you realize that, the better. Then maybe you'll leave the pair of us alone. You're gonna start running out of excuses for not making love to her soon. What are you gonna do then, Nat? Let's get out. It's not fair on her. You're just stringing her along. I said, get out! Lindsay. How's the driving going? Oh, it's all right. At least I haven't knocked anyone over yet. God, that looks terrible. Lad. It's getting better. Lindsay, I am. Um, I know what happened. Carrie did that to you. Who told you? Bev. Bev? Well, your mum must have told her. Well, you know what Bev's like, nose disease. I, am. Um, I know that he raped you. My mum told Bev that. Well, I'm sure she never meant to. So where's Gary now? I don't know. At the flat, I suppose. Why? Don't worry, I'm not gonna go after him or anything. Lindsay, I don't know this has got. Nothing to do with me anymore, but... Well, could you promise me one thing? What? Don't let him persuade you to go back to him. Right. Good. Right, well, then. Take care of yourself.
so uh, it didn't work out between you and Emil. Nah. Kay said I said I don't know. She wasn't the settling down type. She had other commitments, you know. What about you? Do you think you'll ever settle down? <sighs> if anyone had put up at me. What about you? Well, if the right person came along, then, um, yeah, I think I would. Hmm. Right, well, I think we better get this mess cleared up, eh? Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, just got a bit of a dodgy back from moving a tumble dryer this morning. What are you and Mick like? The walking wounded? <laughs> uh, look, I better get off. Yeah. Thanks. Next time. Yeah, next time. I'll see myself out. Right, okay. Oh, Thanks very much. Gosh. Bye. Thanks, Charlo. Shane, what's it got to do with you? She's my wife, isn't she? Come to take her home on your white charger, have you? You're possessive, do you know that? I'm not taking her home. I want her to come away with me. Away where? I don't know yet. Look, is she in or what? What's the big hurry to move away? None of your business. Lens? No, you don't, sunshine. It wouldn't be because someone's after you, would it? This sudden urge to get away. You put them onto me. Not me. Big Davy. You what? He knows you went to the police. Wasn't very pleased, as you can imagine. Especially as his brother's been picked up by the police in Holland. You stupid cow. They could kill me. I want you away from our Lindsay and Kylie for good. I hope you've got a good pair of trainers on. Because you're going to be on the run forever now. And if you ever come near our Lindsay again, I'll get back on my phone to Big Davy. And next time you mightn't be so lucky. It's okay, Linz. Gaddy's just come to say goodbye, haven't you? I want to get away from Liverpool, make a new start. Don't you ever get sick of saying this? I mean it. I want you and Kylie to come away with me. Oh, and how long would it be before you started dissing it again, eh? Or Kylie? You all right? Yeah, it's OK, Mike, yeah. He's just going. Well, go on, then. I mean it. Come on, Lens. It'll be different this time, I promise. Look, if you don't come away with me, this is going to be the last time Kylie ever gets to see her father again. I'd give anything to make Kylie forget about you. I never want you to come near me ever again. Do you understand? I've never hated anyone in my life before, Gary. But I despise you. You're scum. And you can get any idea out of your head about trying to take Kylie away, because we've warned the nursery about you. So you just get back in that car, and I'd keep on driving if I were you. Do you think he'll be back, Mum? No. He won't be coming back. Trust me. This time he's gone for good. Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, no, sir. Uh... 
That's not music, that. That's torture. Oh, nice one, John Peel. Uh, Jim Reeves a tear in his grave. Dad. Have you, uh, have you got a minute? Oh, I see. Sit down, Job, is it? OK, let's hear it. I'm, um, I'm thinking of moving away, you know, making a new start. Oh, my. Dad, there's nothing down for me around here. I'm going nowhere. So, what? I'm going to go to the States. You are? America? What the hell do you want to go there for? I've always wanted to go there. Oh, Michael, I'm only just used to having you back home, son, and I'm going to be losing you again. You can come and visit me, can't you? I don't think the old ticker would stand up to travel and back and forward that far. Took it out of me going to Thailand. OK, I'll come back here and visit you. How's that? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not too happy about you going over there on your own. I mean, what happens if them moonies or sunnies or whatever get hold of you? What, like that mad sign we did to Katie Rogers on our doorstep? Dad, I'm a grown man and I can look after myself. You lad. <sighs> and anyway, what would you do over there? Well, I'd just travel round, you know, look for the odd job here and there. Dad, I know you and Bev have been great to me, but, I mean, apart from my family, there's nothing left for me here. Like, uh, you sure about this, son? What do you mean? Well, you sure that you're not just still stuck on that Lindsay one? <sighs> no, no. Me and Lindsay aren't going to get back together. Not after everything that's happened. I think it's just best if we go our separate ways. <laughs> Sammy, let me. In. Oh, all right, Max. Then, so what's we all the pleasure? Seeking sanctuary. What from? Not what, who? It's a, it's a long story, one that I really don't want to recount. Mm, that bad day, eh? well, you better get a drink. Mo, can you see to Max, please? Uh, no, you're all right. I'll see to Max. I'm saving. Yeah, will you save those lads? Uh, what can I get you? I'll uh, have a large gin and tonic, please, Sammy. Make that a very large one. Right, coming up. Uh, Terry, save again. you putting in? Enough for me to win our bet. You keep giving him them kind of measures. He won't be capable of doing anything, will he? Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Right, there you go. Right, thanks very much. And, uh, what for yourself? Oh, no, you're right. I've got one, thanks. Oh, right. Well, cheers, then. You've got to stop thinking about yourself for once, you know, about what you want. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know I can't stay here forever. I'll have to find somewhere for me and Kylie. Listen, I've told you. You can stay here as long as you want. You've got your family here and your friends. And Mike. Mum, me and Mike can't get back together now. Not after everything that's happened. You never know. He probably regrets ever meeting me in the first place. And I can't say I blame him. We'll just have to go our separate ways. Same again, Max. Mmm. Thanks, Sammy. Do you know I could get used to this? Hmm? What? Been waited on hand and foot. Service with a smile, pleasant company. Well, you should come here more often then, shouldn't you? <laughs> All right, sis. All right, Mick. Uh, same again, please, Mo. One for Mick. Yes, old master. <laughs> oh, I hope you're a good loser. Oh, I wouldn't build your hopes up, love. All men talk a load of crap when they've had too much to drink. Mind you, they talk a load of crap when they're sober and all. No, not this one, man. I'm telling you, tonight's the night. So how's it going? It's not. Went did my shoulder. So does that mean you won't be able to go for that competition you were telling me about? Well, uh, I think I found my way round now. What are they? Steroids. Steroids? Where'd you get them from? Well, from the gym I'm going to. I'm taking them for a genuine reason. It's just so that I can carry on training while I'm injured. Oh, yeah, one of the doormen, when he was working here, he was taking them. Didn't seem to do him any harm. Have you taken any yet? I was going to start tonight. I mean, you don't always get side effects from them, do you? And it's not like I'm going to be taking them for the rest of my life. Ah, of course you won't. I feel you in the competition, then. Here's two of them, mate. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Tess. Right. I'll leave you two lovebirds to it. Right, Jules. 
Night, George. Night, Nat. Night. What's the matter with you? You've been dead moody all night. Yeah, well, maybe that's because I don't like the idea of members of my family knowing all about our sex life. Oh. Yeah, oh, what were you thinking of telling George about us? It's private. I was worried. I thought you'd gone off me. I just needed someone to talk to, and seeing as though Georgia seems to know you better than anyone else, I thought I'd ask her advice. Yeah, well, in future, don't discuss anything about us with her. All right. Yeah, all right. Night, girls. You've got a home to go to. Oh, is it home time already? Can I have another drink? Oh, well, the only problem is Terry said strict about closing time. Uh. <coughs> Well, I could sort you out with a drink if you want, as long as you keep it quiet. Oh, right. Well, my lips are sealed. <sighs> That's me, done. You still here? Uh, yeah, Max is going to stay for a nightcap. So, um, I'll keep hold of these, shall I? All right, I'll uh, see you later then. Yeah, see you, Mo. Hey, Max, you still here, aren't you going home? Uh, he's going to walk me home, Terry. Oh, all right, then. Well, uh, don't forget to lock up. All right. Good night. 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 Um, listen, Max, uh, if you still want this drink, I think we should go through to the office, you know, just in case Terry comes back. So, uh, come through. All right, yeah. Good idea. <sighs> Sit down. Um... Are you sure we're supposed to be in here? I mean, maybe I should go home. Oh, I thought you wanted a drink. Look, just sit down and make yourself comfortable. You don't have to rush off, do you? No, I suppose you're right. After all, it is my home. I can come and go as I please. Ugh, I'm a free agent. Oh, that's what I like about you. You're independent, as well as being intelligent, <sighs> creative, good-looking. Oh, well. If ever I need a reference, I'll know when I come. As well as being mature, I've always preferred talking to older men. <laughs> Not that old. You know what I mean. Some lads are really immature, whereas older men are more, more understanding. They listen to you, like you're doing now. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, it does make a nice change from listening to David wittering on about rotors or Matthew and Emily squabbling over what to watch on television or the chef throwing another tantrum. Well, you've always got Susanna to talk to. I mean, you two are still good friends, aren't you? Uh, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't notice how, I mean, that's how I've met in my marriage. Or should I say marriages? Well, it can't all be down to you, then. Try telling Patricia and Susanna that. You'll be crying into your drink next. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I promise I won't talk about myself. No, it's OK. I'm glad you feel you can talk, even if it is only to your cleaner. <laughs> what? Nothing. No, no, come on, tell me. <laughs> no, I can't. What is it? Well, I was just trying to work out what it is that makes you more attractive than any other man. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I shouldn't have said that. You don't mind, do you? Why should I mind? Well, I think it could be those blue eyes. Seth. Oh, it could even be that dimple. It's very sexy. Do you think so? But I think it's those lips. They're very, very kissable.
Uh, I don't know. I reckon you could be overtraining. Oh, it's on the mend. Just easing myself back into it. Well, you don't want to rush things. You want to watch that arm of yours. I don't nag, Sin. Anyway, I've got to step up my training for this novices competition. I want to... Was Val in the gym this morning? I didn't see her. Just do us a favour, will you? Just leave me out of your love life, please. Why? Well, you know that Fee? Peter's sister from Jackie's salon. She was phoning you. Phoning me? What for? She wants a washing machine plumbing in. What do you think? Do you reckon she fancies me as well? You don't get cocky, Sin. You've already got a cracking girlfriend. All right. Well, if you're half a five, then, I mean, you're not going to complain if somebody's going to give you the tenner, are you? So what do you reckon? Do you think she fancies me? You're going to end up with nothing if you get greedy. Don't say I didn't warn you. Oh, well, thanks very much for... Well, if you are going to see the two of them, there's no way I'm being your go-between. What are you so cubby about? I'm not cubby. See you later. Yeah, see you. Have you seen this? Thomas' team take up after close now, don't they? Ah, go away, you get a bus through there. Ah, oh, only Josh. I mean, he shouldn't leave him enough room to manoeuvre, shouldn't he? Now, yeah, well, you want to have a quiet word with him? Ah, maybe. Ah, hello, Maxie. Morning. We were just saying about all the space all the Simpsons family take up on the close. Yes, yes, we really must talk about it sometime. Yeah. Of course, um, come in. Oh, what are you doing? Who is it, Max? Uh, Sammy. Um, I've got Susanna and the children upstairs. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realise. Hi. Hello. Wasn't expecting you today. Hiya. Hiya, Hi, yeah. Hi, Sammy. Hi. I thought you were waiting in the car. Yes, I am. I mean, I was, and then I saw Sammy and uh, just uh, discussing with her what we needed doing today. Oh, very efficient all of a sudden, isn't he? <laughs> Are you ready, then? Uh, yes, I just uh, need to get my dress book. Ah, oh, fine. Come on, let's get in the car. <sighs> oh, I didn't think they were going to go. Uh, wrong time in the wrong place, I'm afraid. Oh, well, look, can't you let her take the kids to school so we can have a quick half an hour together? Look, Sammy, I... Um, uh, <laughs> what's the matter? Uh, nothing. I just want to pop over and see Belle. Two minutes. Uh, hmm? Fine, fine. I'll be right there. When is the right place and the right time? I, I'm not sure whether there will be one, actually. What? Look, what happened last night, um, of course it was fun, but that's all it was. But we... Look, let's not complicate things, eh? I've got enough on my plate as it is. Well, and think... I am still married. You know, Patricia, she's still putting pressure on me, so... I think it's best if we just put last night behind us. Just come down now. I just wanted a quick word. I've got the kids in the car. No university today. No, my exams are finished. I'm just chilling out for a bit. Oh. Skyrim more like. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Just popped over to wish you all the best with the interview. Oh, thanks. Well, I've just had a phone call from a friend who works there. And apparently none of the other applicants are suitable, so looks like the job's mine. Brilliant. Well, you get it on appearances, if nothing else. Well, first impressions, power dressing, all that stuff. <laughs> well, best get these kids to school. Good luck, anyway. Thanks. Things still going well for you and Max? Well, we're taking things slowly. Max and I have brushed things in the past. But they're running the course. It certainly seem to be. Getting on better than ever. It's a changed man. <laughs> oh, hi, Dan. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Daniel, will you not barge past like that? It's really rude. I'm sorry, I'm behind time. I got chased by this dog. I this guy's magazine to shreds. Excuses, you're just slow. Dan, your printer's churning out a load of stuff, you know. Oh, no. Where are you going now? You'll be late for school. What is all this stuff he keeps printing out? I don't know, but the phone bill's going to be monstrous. Going to have to stop it. It's probably pictures of naked women from the internet. We'll check under his bed when he's gone to school. Do you mind, George? Well, I'm surprised you let him surf, Mum. There's all sorts of stuff on there. Well, you know how your dad feels about censorship. We've been on about it ad infinitum. Right. Shower for me. Right, son, let's have your sheets. Good God, what's all this? You tidy in your room. 
I'll have to phone your mum. She's been waiting 20 years for something like this. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just sorting out a few things. I just could have this as a play deal. You still going out west, then? Yep. Memphis Beckins. To think I nearly sold this for me trip to us. Listen, son, you know that I don't want you to get off, don't you? Yeah. And equally, I know that I can't force you to stay, but... Well, what worries me is, if you're doing all this travelling around, how will you get hold of me in an emergency? That's a bit morbid, isn't it, Pop? No, I'm being realistic, Michael. You only got out of Thailand by the skin of your teeth. Yeah, but what's left for me here? Well, I don't know. Maybe I could get a loan, start you off in a video business. You know, like that fella our Jackie went out with. You'd need to be a lottery winner to fund that kind of setup. Not that I'm cool about going to States. Well, what would make you stay then? Well, the girl in me dreams coming in here and snogging the face off me. <laughs> God. God, you're right, love. It's Gabby, Mum. Every time I hear a noise, I think it's him coming to get me and Carly again. Listen, I've told you, Gary's gone. He wouldn't dare show his face round here. I wish I could be so sure. Look, love, you've got to get on with your life. Gary won't come back. I've seen to it. How do you mean? There was this drug stealer and he was after Gary for something. I just told him where he could find him. What? Well, I just thought they'd scare him, you know, but they threatened to kill him. Have you heard something, Mum? Have they killed him? No. They haven't touched him. That's why he went off in such a hurry. I just wanted him to leave you alone, love, to get on with your life. You can't be looking over your shoulder oh, forever, man. can you? I had to do something, Linz. And we're getting involved with druggies again, it. I know, well... That was stupid to think they'd just have a friendly chat. But the thing is, love, they've gone now. You won't see him again. Now we can just get you and Kylie settled, can't we? And you never know, do you? No, you never know. Lynn's love, for the first time in years, you're free, aren't you? Free for what? Maybe I should have gone with Gary, Mum. Hey, don't you dare say that! Well, what are people going to think about me now, Mum? That you're human? That you've made mistakes? That you've had a really hard time? I brought it all on myself. What? You're a of a husband planting drugs on you and your baby. Your husband raping you. How can any of that be your fault? <sighs> I've made a mess of everything. I could have ruined Mike's life. He must hate me more than anyone. Love, the lad's got a heart, you know. Anything's possible, Linz, if you want it enough. No. He hates me. And I've got to live with that. Don't mention it. What are you doing in here? Next. Where's Mum? Don't flap. She's downstairs. George, please get out. Why? What's the problem? You know what a problem is. Look, just let me have the bathroom to myself, please. I'll dry your back. Mum! Yeah? Can you please tell George to let me have the bathroom to myself, please? Does he ever change, eh, Mum? Well, I don't know what all the fuss is about. There's nothing you've got she's not seen already. Look, I don't want her with me. I'm getting changed. Come on, darling. Let your little brother finish his washes. Thank you. How do I look? Beautiful. Break a leg, Mum. Yeah, good luck. Well, according to inside information, I won't need it. If I perform well at the interview, the job's mine. I'll be there next buyer. <laughs> well, the champagne's already on ice. Right, I'm off. See ya. Bye. 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 Matt. George, I'm busy. All right, Simo. All right. I can't believe I've got so much work to catch up on. You better get started then, haven't you? Just too much. I wish I never sagged off school the other week. I mean, that's gonna kick off when he sees me report. What have you got to do? History, Romans and Britain. It's also live, but you got loads of stuff on the CD room now. It's gotta be in by tomorrow. And I've got a geography and science project to bring in as well. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll see if there's anything on the internet for you. What do you mean? I'll just do a bit of surfing. Prince a load of work out for me this morning. I'll just see if anyone's got any essays or info about the Romans. And then we can do a deal. What sort of deal? You don't expect to get it for nothing, do you? I've got to pay you. It's going to take me a bit of time to look for it, you know. And time's money. And what happens if it's a load of crap? 
Well, I'll read it first, and if it looks any good, you pay for it. Hey, it's you who's got your dad to answer to. All right. I'm in. Good. And with a bit of luck, you'll have it by tonight. All right. Nice one. Hello. Hey, what are they for? Oh, uh, painkillers. To a war wound, you know. Yeah, well, I told you you started saying it again too soon. Leave out, I know what I'm doing. All right, don't bite my head off. All I'm worried about is whether you can help me carry me stock from the van to the shop. What a game. Oh, come on, it won't take a minute. Right. Hey, look, that Val's been on the phone. And Fee's been sniffing around as well. Hey, uh, do I take a little touch of the green-eyed monster here? No, I just think you're dead out of order, you know, messing the two of them about. I can't, I'm not messing anybody around. I've hardly met that Fee. And anyway, what are you getting so wet up about? I'm not head up. Yes, you are. Only last week you say you fill your boots. I wouldn't two-time them, would I? I'm not two-timing anyone. And anyway, you weren't so holy when you steamed in on Marianne when she was going with your Alice. You what? All right, lads. Is there something I said? All right, well, what can I do for you? Uh, it was Simba that was after, actually. That fee feeling was looking for you earlier. She said, can you call in the beauty salon and see her? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, and listen, by the way, I was chatting to Bev and I, Jack, earlier. If that parking gets any worse around the coast, then we might have to call the Rizzy's meeting. Yeah, OK. Right, uh, see you then, eh? See you I'm sorry. Oh, you're right, Simon. I shouldn't have got on my eye horse. Just tired, you know. The sooner I get somebody working in there with me, the better. You, um, still all right to give us a hand with these cookers? Just give us five minutes, eh? Children's room yet? Oh no, I'm sorry, not yet. Oh, you all right? Yeah. Max been bossing you around. Oh no. Is your daughter okay? Yeah, yeah, she's great. Boyfriend trouble. Yeah, I suppose she could call it that. Anything I could do to help? <sighs> no, thanks. Uh, probably not. Well, you could give me a try. I've had quite a bit of experience of man trouble. I just feel so stupid. Oh, I've got myself involved in this really heavy relationship. Madly in love. Yeah. But the only problem is that he's still married. Ah. Uh, I mean, you've probably been through all this yourself. It, it's Patricia. I mean, she just won't let go. Of who? Max. Hey. Look, Jack, what do you say that we put all this time and business behind us, Ava? Forgive and forget? Yeah. What about Jimmy and Bo? Well, I think that we'll just have to agree to disagree on that one, eh? <laughs> How's Lindsay? Oh, terrible. Still blames herself for everything. As soon as she forgets about it, all the better, eh? Yeah. How's your mate? Well, between me and you, he's missing Lindsay something rotten. If it's all gone right, they would have been starting the best years of the life in Australia. So, no chance of that now, eh? Thing is, I get a feeling that Michael would love to have another go with Lindsay, but... Well, I'd carry around. We won't see him again, Ronnie. He's gone. Well, we've heard that before, haven't we, love? No, this is for good, definite. Anyway, I thought you were doing your best to keep them apart. Yeah. Not anymore, though. He's absolutely heartbroken. And Lindsay. It does seem like they were made for each other, doesn't it? Thing is, Michael's decided to start afresh in America. What? As soon as he can, he's packing his bags and getting away. But doesn't he know how Lindsay still wants him? No, and I bet Lindsay doesn't really know how Michael feels either, eh? No. Well, maybe it's time that us two grown-ups put our heads together. See what we can do to help. 
on the sofa in the club office. Oh, I know it sounds like something out of Cosmo, but well, it just happened. It was right at the time, and he was just so nice. Yes, it would be. I mean, I'm not some little girl anymore. It's been a long time since I was knocked off my feet by some fella, but Max is different, isn't he? I mean, Owen, oh, that was my ex-husband. It's like some clumsy kid compared to Max. Max is just so considerate. Is he? And I was sure he felt the same way. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I've read it all wrong. But I really feel as if I've got something special with him. I see. So this Patricia thing, well, it's just knocked me sideways. I mean, I didn't know she was still on the scene, causing trouble. But I'm going to give him all the support he needs. Do you think I'm stupid? No. I'm glad you told me. It's good to be able to share these things. Well, what should I do now? Uh, well, if I were you, I'd put it out of my mind. Take the afternoon off. Oh, thanks for listening. No, it's OK. Oh, Anne, you won't mention any of this to Max, will you? Oh, no, don't worry. That's the last thing I'd tell him. Right. I just spoke to our Michael on the phone. He's on his way over. The trap is set. Oh, here's your Lindsay now. Just that natural. Okay, well, are you All right, love. Yeah. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Well, what's the matter? It's a stomach. Yeah. What? Yeah, well, it sort of started in my head, you know, and then it, like, travelled down the side of my body to my stomach. Hey, listen, you want to see a doctor? Never mind two paracetamol. All right, love. Oh, look, here's our Michael. Oh. All right, son. You all right? What's wrong with it? Uh, I don't know. It, uh, it wouldn't turn over. Maybe there's something loose, eh? Uh, listen, shall I make a cup of tea, you know, while we're all here? Oh, smashing that, yeah. I think I'm gonna get going. Come on, now, get in there. Go on, change your scenery, I'll do you good. Come on. Here you are, I've got it started. Uh, aren't you gonna come in for a cup of tea? Jackie's put the kettle on. No, we might as well run it around the block a couple of times, eh? Right. You keep Lindsay here, OK? I'll work on our Michael. Drinkies? Yeah, Steve Forbes, please. Thanks. Hi, Steve. Listen, I really thought I was going to make it in today, but this bug's really getting a hold. Yeah. Well, see how I am tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye. You're not ill. I might be. There's nothing wrong with you. Thought you were doing architecture, not medicine. Anyway. Gives me a chance to spend a little bit of time with my brother. What are you doing? Planning my courseware design. You're going to be a brilliant architect, Matt. Thanks. Georgia, please. Where's Jules today? She's at work. Look, can I get on with this, please? I've been thinking about the wedding. And yeah, what about it? It's the wrong move. George, don't. It won't work, Nat. You want it to work, but it won't work. There's an inevitability about some things. Destiny. Deep down, you know where your destiny is, don't you? Hello? In here, Mum. <clears throat> How'd it go? Can't believe how stress-free it was. And? Who knows? What, did they ask lots of trick questions? Yeah, loads, but I think I spotted them all. In fact, I think they signposted them. When will you know for sure? Uh, a couple of days. Well, sounds like it's in the bag, Mum. Tea? Yeah, great. Right, I'll just pop to the loo, and then I'll make a nice Earl Grey. I think I might finally have left the ranks of the unemployed. Well, I hope so, Mum. You deserve it. Thanks. So does Danny. If I do get it, we'll be able to afford a decent school for him. So, how's your day been? 
Georgie behaving herself? No, she's been a complete pain. I heard that. Mum, I was thinking of getting in contact with Martin. But why? You can't stand him. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't have his children. I just want to see George happy again. Yeah. I suppose so. Anything's worth a try. Hi. Hello, Max. Sammy gone? Yes. Why, did you want to see her? No, no, no. I just wondered if she was still here. It's worked out well, hasn't it? What has? Employing Samantha. Especially after the fuss you made after I took her on. <laughs> yeah. You are happy with her, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> well, I did hesitate for a moment. Put a young thing like her around the place. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll just say hello to the children. Max? Yes? I'm so glad you and I are trying to build a decent, trusting relationship again. Yes, as we agreed. Provided we don't rush things, um, I'm very content. Are you sure? Yeah. Just because his dad says so doesn't mean Mike wants to try again with me, Mum. I just let him go off and live in America without giving this another girl the best. Lindsay, I'm only asking you to talk to him, love. I mean, just test the water. It's not as if you're complete strangers, is it? May as well be for the amount we've said to each other these past few months. Have a look. You've got nothing to lose, have you? Oh, what if he knocks me back? This is the man who was prepared to give up everything. You know, go to Australia, take any blame that came his way, and all because of you. And I bet he wishes he hadn't bothered now. And then she made this massive sacrifice to get you out now. That says to me that you two were meant to be together. Honestly, son, I can... I can see this big neon sign. Mike and Lindsay forever. Just knock on the door. Just do it. That's it, son. Just walk right over there and tell us straight. You want to make a go of it. It's a waste of time, Mum. I've brought him nothing but misery. He won't want to know me now. There's no point. She won't be insisted. She doesn't want to know. But you could try. Dad, I'm over all that now. There's no point in making up the past, is there? It's time to move on. I'm going to go to the States, and I'm going to make a new start. <laughs> 